probably one of the most asked questions that I get on this channel is what is the equipment that you use for that bait? What is the rod, reel, line, and everything like that? And probably the lure that I get this question the most for is a chatter bait or a bladed jig. And so today's video, I just wanna break down the entire bladed jig chatter bait system from the rod, the reel, line, but also the baits themselves, the trailers, everything that I use. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Outfitters.com. Pretty much all of the equipment that I am talking about today, you can purchase at Sportsman's Outfitters. So if it interests you, then click those links down below in the description. Also, I can't believe it, this channel is closing in on 100,000 subscribers. And when we hit 100,000, I'm going to be giving away a $500 gift card to Sportsman's Outfitters to one of those subscribers. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that sub button right now. Now to me, probably the most important thing about fishing a bladed jig, a chatterbait, is actually the rod that you use. And this is a question that I get a lot on the channel is what rod do you use for fishing a chatterbait? When I first started fishing the bladed jig, I fished it on my jig rod, which was a seven foot three inch medium heavy power fast action rod. And the reason that I fished it on that rod was because the bladed jig is a jig, right? But what I found is that although a bladed jig is just a jig with a blade on it, you wanna use a really different style of rod than your jig rod. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you, I actually had a lot of success using that jig rod, but there were a few things that I noticed, and one of them was that when I would go to set the hook on a fish from time to time, I would hook into that fish for a split second, and then he would come off. And that wasn't all the time, it was just every now and then. And also, there were a few times where a big bass would come up to jump and I would actually lose him while fishing that jig rod. Now, of course, after I had some of these issues, I looked into what some of the big chatterbait fishermen use for their rod. The guys that are just known for fishing a chatterbait, what do they use? And literally every single person on that list used a more of a parabolic bending rod, a moderate action, and more specifically, they used a composite rod, a rod that was half graphite and half fiberglass. So this rod is really more of a heavy action crankbait rod than a jig rod. As soon as I made the switch to this composite rod, the first thing that I noticed that on average, the fish that ate a chatterbait ate it a lot deeper. I had a lot more fish that were hooked deeper in the mouth and not towards the top of their mouth. I also noticed that those bites that I would get where I would set the hook, have that fish hooked for a split second and it came off, those pretty much disappeared. The thing about a bladed jig that is so much different than a regular jig is that it is constantly moving through the water. So when the bass go to inhale that bait, it is moving away from them. Now the thing that you need to think about is when a bass goes to bite a lure, right, it's going to create negative pressure in its mouth. And when it opens its mouth up, it will suck that lure inside. So if that chatterbait is on the move and a bass is tracking it and then opens up its mouth, that chatterbait will actually start to slow down as that bass is sucking that bait in. Now, if you are using a graphite rod, a fast action graphite rod like a jig rod, you are going to feel that bass sucking that bait in a lot quicker and therefore you're going to set the hook a little bit quicker, which means you're going to hook a lot of those bass towards the top of their mouth. And what I found out is that those fish that I was hooking and losing, they were probably just hooked in the skin of their lip and they would just pop off with a little bit of pressure. Now, when you're using that parabolic bin, that composite rod, when that fish goes to open its mouth and suck that bait in, you actually won't feel feel that fish suck that bait in quite as fast. So therefore that bass can actually get a hold of that bait before you go to set the hook. So I truly believe that a composite rod is going to help you to catch a lot more bass and land a lot more bass with a bladed jig or a chatterbait. Now the exact chatterbait rod that I use is the Arc Tharp Series B Hitte Rod. This is a composite rod. It is seven foot, four inches in length. It has a medium heavy power 
in a moderate fast action. B Hite actually stands for Brett Height, who is known as one of the best chatterbait fishermen on the planet. And him, along with Randall Tharp, designed this exact rod. It's the one that I use. It's extremely light and it's extremely affordable. Now, when it comes to a reel, I really like a 7.1 to 1 gear ratio reel. That to me is the perfect chatterbait ratio. It's not too fast, it's not too slow, it's really just perfect. Now, this reel here is a Bruin ELS reel. It was designed by Paul Elias, and I love that it has 80 different brake settings on the side. Now, when it comes to the line itself, I use 20 pound fluorocarbon almost exclusively with a chatterbait. There are times where I want to get that bait a little bit deeper, and therefore I'm going to step down to something like 15 pound fluorocarbon to help me get a bait deeper. But most of the time, probably 90, 95% of the time, I'm throwing a bladed jig, it's 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now that we talked about rod reel and line, let's actually jump into the baits themselves and the trailers. I have used a lot of different bladed jigs before, and I actually did a full video where I compared several different brands of bladed jigs. Now, although there is definitely a time and place for every bladed jig, there are three bladed jigs that I use the most, and they all happen to be in the Chatterbait family of bladed jigs. The Jackhammer, the Big Blade, and the Mini Max. Now, if you guys have been around the channel, you know that I have really fallen in love with the Mini Max over the last couple of months. This is a bladed jig that is really just more of a finesse bladed jig. It has a lot smaller profile to it. But with that being said, I can still fish it on my same chatterbait rod and line configuration. Now, the reason that I love the Mini Max so much is because I fish around fish that get a ton of pressure. And we have a lot of tough conditions in Ohio. And I have seen that this chatterbait will get bit when your standard chatterbait, like the original or even the jackhammer, will not get bit. So this is just something that I have kept on the front deck of my boat for a while now. Now the jackhammer is really my go-to bait. No matter what lake I go to, if I think there is a chatterbait bite going on, usually I pick up the jackhammer first. And then from there, if I kind of start getting some bites, I will experiment with the other type of bladed jigs. But I almost always start with a jackhammer because I just have a ton of confidence with this bait. Now, unfortunately, the jackhammer is a little bit expensive, but it really does come with premium products. And the best thing about a chatterbait is you don't lose a lot of them. So you can really catch a lot of fish on that jackhammer. Now, the big blade chatterbait is one that I don't pick up as much as those other baits, but it seems like if they are on the big blade, you catch the biggest fish in your lake. Now, the few situations that I like to use that big blade in are during the pre-spawn of the year when it seems like you have dirtier water a lot of times during the pre-spawn and fish just seem to like a lot of hard vibration during that time of the year too. So I always have this tied up in the pre-spawn. The other situation that I always have the big blade tied up is when I'm fishing for big fish. If you are fishing a lake that just has a bigger average bass, that is when I'm gonna pick up the big blade. Now, one of the biggest questions that I get on the channel is what are your favorite trailers for a chatterbait? And these are the three that I use nearly 100% of the time. I have a Strike King Caffeine Shad, I have a Yamamoto Zeiko, and I also have a Strike King Structure Bug. Now, I use a Structure Bug when I am fishing a chatterbait around wood cover. This makes a huge difference in actually being able to get that bait to come through the wood without hanging up. I typically cut a triangle into the bait right above these wings and then I pinch these wings off and that is what my trailer is. Now, the important thing about this is the way that you feed the trailer onto your chatterbait and you're actually going to want to make sure that when you put that trailer on that the trailer is laying perpendicular to the hook. So I'm going to stick the hook in the top and I'm gonna feed the trailer hook on just like this and that hook is going to come out right about where that last ring ends. Because that trailer lays perpendicular to the hook, as it goes over brush, it will actually come over it without it rolling and getting hung. So if you're fishing around wood cover, try a structure bug. Now the next trailer that I use a lot is just this Yamamoto Zeiko. This was actually designed for a bladed jig and I think that it works extremely well. 
well. Anytime I'm fishing the bait in the open or around grass, that is when I'm gonna pick up the Yamamoto Zeiko. Now, I like to fish the Zeiko on the big blade and the jackhammer or the original chatterbait. But if I'm fishing a Minimax, that is when I pick up the Strike King Caffeine Shad. If you look at the top or the back of this Caffeine Shad, you can see that there is a hook slot. Now, I'm actually gonna go about an inch above where that hook slot ends and I'm going to cut that bait about in half. This little section is what you are left with and I'm simply going to cut off the belly of this bait just like that. Now, if you look at what you are left with, you have a flat side and you have a round side. I like the round side to be on the bottom side of my chatterbait. So when I rig up that mini max, I am going to make sure that the round side ends up on the bottom of that bladed jig. Now, the last thing that kind of completes this video is talking about the colors of chatterbait that I use. And I really, really like to keep this simple. For the most part, I'm going to use a shad colored like a white colored chatterbait a green pumpkin and a black and blue those are the three colors that i use most of the time now during the pre-spawn of the year i like sometimes a little bit weirder colors i like that red that fire crawl color i also like this weird coleslaw color that i think you can only find in the big blade but for the most part i use a white a green pumpkin and a black and blue. Now, if I'm fishing around bass that are eating threadfin shad or gizzard shad, that is when I like to use that white. If I'm fishing in really clear water or I'm fishing around bass that are eating bluegill, I really like to use that green pumpkin color. And anytime that I'm fishing in just really dark or muddy water conditions, that is when I pick up that black and blue. Even if it's really clear water, but it's really dark skies, you have really cloudy skies, that is when I'm going to pick up that black and blue. I have done several videos on chatterbaits before. This video right here is all about the big blade. In this video, I did a comparison of a lot of different brands of bladed jigs. So if you guys wanna watch those videos next, that would be awesome. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe and enter in that contest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.